Hey guys, welcome back to Superpower User. My name is Stanley, and today we're going to be looking at the fastest, most compact NAS for your home or small business that you may actually want to buy. What I've got here today is the TVS 882ST3 from QNAP, and this is an 8 bay NAS designed for 2.5 inch SSDs. This is a little bit more uh, unique of a NAS compared to regular NASs on the market. Uh, not only that is it an 8 bay drive drive NAS, but it's you know very small. It pretty much takes place takes the space of a 4 bay NAS. Um, that you may find from QNAP or from Synology or you know other NAS companies. Being two and a half inch, you know, drive bays, of course it's you know, meant for SSDs, the regular SATA 3 SSDs. Um, what I'm gonna do is you know, show you around the outside a little bit, front, back, and then what, I'm gonna show you some benchmarks of this thing connected to my devices and then we'll wrap up. And in a couple of future videos, I'll you know, do a teardown or at least a quick peek on the inside of this NAS and then perhaps even talk about some cloud backup. So uh, features or our configuration. So if you wanna see those videos in the future, make sure to subscribe for those future videos. So on the front here, what we got is all eight bays, uh, access for all eight bays. Um, in order to pull them out, you've got a little lock button down here that you can flip and a little button that you push. And if you push it, you have this lever that pops out and you can pull this thing out and out comes the drives. The drives that I have chosen to load this thing up um, is the Micron 1100 two and a half inch to two terabyte drives. So I've got eight two terabyte drives in here. Uh, why did I go with these and not say something like something more mainstream like Samsung Evos? Uh, Samsung Evos are a very good drive, you know, two in two terabyte drives, three terabyte. They make three or four terabytes now, I think. Um, these are the off-brand, uh, direct from the manufacturer. They're the uh, OEM version of the Crucial drives, Crucial. I want to say MX400 drives. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it's something like that. And they're pretty good, uh, but they're not, say, the best. They're not like a uh, Samsung, you know, Pro 9, 950, 960, two and a half inch SSDs, or even the later 970 Evos. Um, anyway, I digress. These were cheap, relatively cheap, so that's why I went with these. End of story. <laughs> anyway, so to put it back in, you know, you slide it in, push, push this lever down, it locks into place, and then you flip the lock. And if you flip all these locks, you know, you can push on the buttons and the levers won't pop out anymore. Uh, up here, up top, you have a LCD screen. It's a pretty bright blue and white LCD screen, and it shows you all your indications such as the modes, uh, status indicators, IP addresses. So for example, when you're booting this thing up, it will show you know, initializing, mounting drives. Uh, it'll show you the first couple IP addresses that it, you know, it takes or whatever it connects to. And it's a nice way to see things at a glance, and especially you've got your enter and your select buttons tier so that you can you know, page through a couple menus. The capabilities, of course, of these buttons are limited. It's only meant for really just quickly looking through things. Uh, if I, you, know, you really want to do some configuring, that's where you go to the computer and fire up the QFinder Pro app on the computer or even logging directly into the NAS to, um, uh, to, to configure the NAS. Now, You've got your power button here. Uh, hold the power button to shut down, push it again to start up, very simple. And below that, you've got a copy button. And in the copy button, you've got a uh, USB 3 type 
C connector. So if you were to plug in a flash drive into this connection port right here and hit the copy button, it'll copy the contents of that flash drive directly onto the NAS. Uh, so you can, you know, you've got photos or if you've got one of something like this here, your SD card goes in there and then, um, you know, you plug in your SD card like that and then hit the copy, it'll dump all the files from the SD card onto the NAS so that you don't have to go to the computer, transfer this stuff over. And it's, it helps with the workflow basically. The other, uh, there, there's a couple of main features of, other than the two and a half inch drives, there's a couple of main features special about this NAS. This NAS is a Thunderbolt 3 NAS and it also has 10 gigabit capability. So at the very top here, you have your Thunderbolt 3 PCIe card. Uh, this thing is a custom card built by QNAP. Um, it's got two connections and it's full Thunderbolt 3 capability, meaning 40 gigabits per second connection. So I can connect to the NAS via Thunderbolt 3 uh, using my MacBook Pro that, that I've got here. Uh, I've also got a Thunderbolt 3 card on my PC and I can connect using a Thunderbolt 3 cable such as this. Below that, you've got two, a two port Intel X550 10 gigabit ethernet card. Uh, this ethernet card is, I think, manufactured by QNAP or one of QNAP's, you know, it's QNAP branded, but effectively it's an X550 T2 10 gigabit network card from Intel. Um, the X550, you know, 10 gigabit network cards are tried and true. They're really reliable and they have very consistent high speeds. I've also got one of those in my desktop. So these two cards, really good cards, uh, really fast connectivity, especially for this NAS, especially for all of the, you know, SSDs and uh, Pi bandwidth stuff. Really good. Anyway, moving on, you've got your power supply fan here. Uh, this power supply fan is relatively quiet. Uh, if you, you know, you put your ear up to it, yeah, you can hear a little bit of it, but about a foot away, you can't really hear it at all. And it really never ramps up. Now, next to it, you've got your 120 volt power connector. Uh, below that, 120 millimeter fan. This thing is quiet. It, it moves a lot of air. Um, no complaints about it. To the right of it, you've got two gigabit network cards. Um, because you've got the 10 gigabit, you probably will really never need this unless, I don't know, you, you probably won't need it. <laughs> Above that, you've got a couple USB 3 ports, a HDMI port, and a uh, USB 3.1 type A port right here. Uh, something to note about the HDMI port, you can run this device, the NAS, almost like a home theater or device or a small little computer by just connecting HDMI directly to a monitor or TV. There's a user interface. You can connect the keyboard to this thing and you can surf the, well, surf the web. It's built into the operating system to do that. Uh, you can take it one step further and install Linux onto this thing and, uh, and, and you know, boot Linux uh, within the QTS software. It's, it's, it's got the provisions for that anyway. It's, it's a little bit more detailed than I want to get into right now, but needless to say, this is basically a full-fledged computer. Now, moving to the side here, you've got air intake holes on the left side. Um, the left side is also where the CPU sits and where the memory chip sits and it pulls air in here and then it also pulls air in from the front and moves it across the drives and all that air exits from the back. There's really nothing to see on the bottom except the four feet and on, on the other side you have a little cutout. I suspect this is where the little speaker is. It doesn't look like it's a ventilation cutout. And in terms of processing power, this device as configured has a Intel 6700HQ Skylake processor that is clocked from about 2.6 and can turbo all the way to 3.5 gigahertz. 
Uh, also, this thing is configured with 16 gigabytes of DDR4, I think 2133 megahertz memory. Um, there also is, there's also another configuration where you can get an i5 and eight gigabytes of memory for this thing. But if you're looking for you know, virtualizations or doing all sorts of apps on this thing, running apps on this thing, you probably want to go with the higher memory option. Anyway, so that wraps up the you know, tour overall overview of this device. What we'll do is move over to the benchmarking next. All right, what I've got here is a MacBook Pro and a Thunderbolt 3 cable directly connecting the NAS to the MacBook Pro. Uh, Wi-Fi is currently turned off. And what you'll see is that the NAS is gonna recognize the MacBook Pro and assign an IP address to the MacBook Pro. Uh, QNAP's implementation of Thunderbolt 3 is not a direct connect system. It is actually a um, IP emulation. It, emulates a 20 gigabit per second network card via Thunderbolt 3. And when connected, the program will pop up and you can connect and tell it to connect to which drive you want and you know, mount the drive. Uh, what I've got here is I've mounted one of my main drives um, and launching AJA, the benchmark tool, once the application is launched, I'm selecting 16 gigabytes, 4K, 3820 by 2160 uh, ProRes file, and it's just testing a read and a write. And you can see the write starts out you know, mid 800s and it's gonna top out about 900 megabytes on write. And then for read, it's going to be closer to 1000 to 1200 megabytes per second read. Uh, this is plenty fast for any kind of video editing work. If you want to directly edit the files off of the NAS instead of, say, the MacBook Pro, you can, you know, you have enough overhead where you can be scrubbing through timelines and editing, editing directly off the NAS and, you know, Final Cut Pro library on the NAS. Uh, it, it, this is, you've got enough speed here. On the Windows side, the speeds are a little bit different. The equipment on the hardware on the computer is also a little bit different. I've got a 960 Pro M.2 SSD, one terabyte SSD. The read and the write speeds, the write, again, tops out about 800 megabytes per second uh, write. And then for read, that is about you know 13 to 1400 second, megabytes per second write. So basically, this is one of the fastest NASs you can buy on the market today. Um, you know, you can buy any NAS and throw SSDs into it, but you have to have the processing power and the connectivity to be able to support those kind of speeds. So this thing has an Intel i7 processor and it has Thunderbolt 3 connectivity. It's got 10 gigabit connectivity, allowing you to actually harness the, the speeds of the SSD. Um, one thing I wanted to touch upon was that it's while it's true, conventional hard drive, three and a half inch hard drives, uh, especially if you have eight or 12 of those in those larger NASAs can, can reach overall throughputs of, you know, almost a gigabyte per second. What it won't do as well is those 4K small files, the metadata um, and all those things. This being SSDs based, it, it gives you all the benefits of the small read and write files. This device will feel more snappy than say a, you know, a 12 drive array of, you know, three and a half inch hard drives, 10 terabyte, three and a half inch hard drives. So there's two points I wanted to bring up about uh, Thunderbolt 3. The first is the Thunderbolt 3 uh, implementation that Q, uh, QNAP has made with this device and all basically all of their Thunderbolt 3 devices is you cannot directly attach it to a device and see it as just a hard drive like you know a USB hard drive you know directly attached mounted on the desktop. Um, 
they have to use the QNAPS implementation basically simulates a network car and you have to connect it through connect to this device via that simulated network car network interface. Um, and the second point is the network interface uh, is a 20 gigabit per second interface instead of the full 40 gigabit per second potential of Thunderbolt 3. So this device here has a full-fledged Thunderbolt 3 interface, 40 gigabit per second uh, dual dual way two way uh, you know bandwidth, but it's the software side is limited to only 20 gigabit per second up and down, meaning you only have a theoretical uh, head, you know, overhead of about 2.5 gigabytes per second. Granted, as you can see, the transfer rate, we weren't really pushing 2.5. We were, you know, we topped out around 1400 megabytes per second. So even if they were to implement 40 gigabits per second uh, virtualized, network card over Thunderbolt 3, you probably won't even come close to that five gigabytes per second anyway. I know I said that we would open up the SNAS and take a look at inside earlier in the video, but it looks like the video is going a little bit long. So I'm gonna cut it right here. And you know, in the next video, I've got a 32 gigabyte memory kit that I'm gonna install into the SNAS, uh, replace the 16 gigabytes. So if you wanna see that video, make sure to subscribe so that you get a notification for that video when that goes up. Or if you're watching this you know, down the road, I'm gonna link that video down here so that you can see that if you're interested. Um, if you found this video interesting or helpful, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps comment in the section down below what NAS you're using or why you might be wanting to upgrade to the TVS-882 ST3. Anyway. We'll see you in the next one.